Friends, greetings to each of you from the session at Community Grace. I'm coming to you on behalf of the session this evening. At this point, we have been doing this pandemic thing for since mid-March, and we have scrambled, and we have pivoted, and we continue to that do those things as things change on a daily basis. Perhaps your head is even still spinning because of all those changes you make sometimes on a weekly basis. We have shifted by necessity to online worship. We know that it's not perfect. If we had our choice, we would be worshiping together in the sanctuary. We would be singing together. We would be greeting one another. We would be breaking bread together in our building. But despite the building being closed since March, Community Grace has not been closed. We have continued to be the ministry in this area to each other and to our community. We have and we continue to learn more about this new coronavirus. We now know that its main method is of transmission is by aerosol. And that complicates things quite a bit. I was thinking a couple of weeks ago when the smoke and from the fires in California and Colorado and Utah came into the valley, they drifted in, they came from other places and the, the, the wind currents carried them in. That's exactly what happens with this virus. It can be picked up by currents in a building from ventilation systems and can be shared with others. And do you remember how the smoke just sort of hung in the valley? That's what this virus can do. It can hang in a room for up to a couple of days at least we know now. This virus has disrupted our lives in many different ways. Some of us are, are grieving the loss of community, those face-to-face -face interactions that, that, that we use to sustain ourselves. We grieve the loss of family and friends when they have died and we do not have the normal rituals in place to grieve. And so that leaves us feeling a bit lost. It has had financial interruptions. Those things that we used to do on a daily basis we can no longer do. Even just traveling to see our family or having our family come to see us is much harder or impossible right now. Or just calling up a friend and saying, hey, let's do lunch. It's just harder. Everything is harder right now. We have and we continue to learn as we go along. We know that Community of Grace is diverse in its concerns, in its perspectives, and, and in its risk tolerance levels. We also know that what has worked or is working in other places to open a building or to have gatherings here in the valley or in other places probably won't work at Community of Grace. We are not them. We have our own set of unique challenges to meet and to figure out. Each week, the benediction offers you an invitation to love your neighbor. The session takes that seriously. How do we love you best? How do we love our community best? And now we ask, how do we love you and our communi community safely during a pandemic? The session has been collecting data, scientific data from, from a lot of different places. We are, are looking to our leaders at the local level and at the state level and from places like John Hopkins COVID Institute to formulate our best plan. We also have a group who is looking into how we can better ventilate our building to protect ourselves better. And if we look around the corner, we know that the holidays are right here. We know that travel, while may de be diminished, will happen. We are not naive to that. We know that families will gather together. And so those family bubbles that might have been this big the last couple of months they're going to grow just that little bit bigger and incorporate more people and those people have bigger connections. So on Tuesday night, out of deep concern for both for Community Grace and for our community at large, the session made the difficult decision to not have any in-person worship throughout the end of this year. 
And I want you to just pause right now and take a couple deep breaths. Just, whoa. That's a lot to hear. You may have been expecting that or surmising that that might be coming. But still, to hear it as a reality sometimes just takes our breath away. It was not a decision that the session made lightly or made easily. I have been working on and will continue to work on ways that we can do a virtual Advent and Christmas together. Some of those ways may be a little simple, a little bit fun, but I do hope you choose to participate. It is that participation that helps hold a community together during hard times. I won't try to recreate what we've done in the past. It's, it's just not possible. And finally, I want to remind you of our charge we say every week in worship. Go out into the world. We are still going out into the world just in a different way. Have courage. You all have more courage than you think you do. Trust me on that. Hold on to what is good. Look for the good in every day. Return no one evil for evil. God is God and we are not. Thank God. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Everyone needs a little lift now and then. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, even during a pandemic. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's peace guide you and sustain you. May God's grace enfold you and care for you. Amen.